This is the way I went, but if you follow the way I went, then you wouldn't have the same trip I did. I went the way the wind blew me. That was one of the best things. I could drive all day and when I felt tired, pull over and sleep there in that town. When I felt hungry, I'd stop. Sometimes my route was a last minute decision. Turn left, keep going straight. The most important skill to have if you're going to do a scooter trip across Thailand is discernment. All along the way, people are going to tell you to do this, to not do this, to stay here, to don't stay here, to bring this and don't bring this and ride this type of bike. And some of it will be good and useful advice. And some of it won't help you on your path. And you need the skill of discernment to take what's good and leave the rest to get you where you want to go. And where I wanted to go was Beitong. Most days I spent about four hours driving. Most uncomfortable part was the weather. It would get hot, and then it would dump rain, and then it would get hot again. One day I got completely soaked and completely dried out twice. I never really made a reservation. I always just kind of pulled my bike into town, drove around, and found a spot. We got this guy here. He was armed with a slingshot to defend against monkey invaders. walk up this temple here. Steps seem to be occupied by this monkey gang. I don't know if I can pass. They're a little bit scary. I can try. Oh, I made it. Oh, I made it. Oh, that was scary. No monkey bites. When I was on top of the temple at Prachuap, I looked down the coast and I saw the beach and the waves and the rain and the sun shining through the clouds. And out to the west was the border with Myanmar and there was rice paddies and rivers and road in front of me. And I just had this urge to go into it. I wanted to eat it, to consume it, to make it part of me, to make that view, that passage a part of me. After I passed through it, then it would become me. It would become my memory and my experience. Driving in the rain is hard. You have to be on edge. It's unsafe. My poncho would always just get soaked through. I'd be totally soaked. This place in Nakhon Si Tamarat was a godsend. It was just off the side of the road. Spent an hour in there ordering everything on the menu. Donuts, milk tea, pork noodles, orange juice. Just watching the people and making my little videos. said there was monkeys here, crab eating macaques, something like that. And I really wanted to see them, but she said because it's raining, they go back into the jungle. And 
when it's sunny they come out but it's sunny again unfortunately I haven't seen any monkeys yet So I was driving along and then I realized I was in this line and then I realized I was on a ferry and it was the ferry to Song Kla. Song Kla is this beautiful little town right at the edge of this peninsula. Split between on the east side of it is the ocean and on the west side of it is a, is a big inland lagoon slash lake. There's so much history there. There used to be a Muslim settlement and then the king of Ayutthaya came down with his gunship and shot them all away. And then at one point that Chinese settlement was ruled by a Japanese samurai governor. I love learning history this way, being in the place, seeing buildings, seeing people's names, looking them up on Wikipedia. And going to the museum and really taking my time there, reading the articles and exhibits and then looking deeper into the what I see at the museum, researching it more online. One thing I really liked about Songkla was the big public beach. In other places in Thailand, the beach is kind of walled off by a wall of hotels and resorts, and the only way you can get through to the beach are through these little holes and alleyways. But Songkla was just a big road, and then some pine trees, and then the beach. And I liked that, the accessibility to the public. South of Songkla was Hat Yai. And then south of Hat Yai are the three provinces of southern Thailand, the deep south, where even the Thais don't go. So there's been this active rebellion against the central government of Thailand in the southern three provinces of Thailand. A big sticking point that I see is the Thai national curriculum says that to be Thai is to be Buddhist, but these people are Muslim. And there's been atrocities on both sides. There's been bombings and killings of police, and there's been killings of teachers and heavy-handed tactics by police and arrests without cause. And you see the fear in the streets and I saw checkpoints where boys had to lift their shirts to show they didn't have bombs. And it must be hard to live somewhere where you have to lift your shirt to just drive across town.
So outside of Beitong, right on the border of Myanmar, there's these tunnels that Thai communists dug. And for years, I think more than a decade, they hid in these tunnels while the Thai government tried to bomb them and root them out. And this man here selling the tickets now for these tunnels lived in them. He was one of the communists who dug them. A real live communist. What was so cool for me was he's the museum. The museum is in these people who, who are living in this place now, still today. So I first smelled the smell while I was driving and it was just this bad smell that I would kind of drive through. And I wouldn't know what it was, but it happened a couple times once I got down to the south. And then I was walking around in the town one day and the smell was super strong in this one place. And I went and found this warehouse. And the smell was like this kind of mushroomy fungal smell, but also with pang of ammonia to it. And then I, I went to lunch and I showed the people at the restaurant this picture. I was like, what is this? They're like, oh, it's rubber. And they, they grow it all over the south. And they grow it in these rubber plantations that I was always driving through. And you actually want to harvest the, the liquid form of the latex. And that really stinky kind of dirty stuff is what's called cup drip, which has its own uses, another type of latex. So when it was time to go back to Bangkok, it was actually really easy. I just drove my scooter to the train station, bought a ticket for myself and for my scooter, and rode the train with my scooter back up to Bangkok. I had to come out here to the cargo station, which is across the river in Bangkok. It was about an hour uh, journey to just to get out here. Um, but it made it. Scooter made it and, uh, and drive it back into Bangkok. So, system works.